Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Today we're going to make a cottage pie recipe. And if you live on my side of the Atlantic, you would probably uh, call this shepherd's pie, mistakenly. We're using beef. Um, shepherd's pie, cottage pie, exactly the same thing, except cottage pie made with beef and shepherd's pie made with lamb. So we're gonna start out with some ground beef in the bottom of this heavy cast iron pan and we're gonna brown it off. And I've got enough ground beef that I'm gonna do it in two batches so that it actually browns rather than steams. So initially, I'm just gonna break this up a little bit in the bottom of the pan to move it around, make sure the bottom of the pan is coated, and then I'm gonna leave it alone. Leave it alone, let it brown on the bottom side. I know the tendency for everybody, myself included, is to get in there and shake it around and move it all the time. Um, let it brown, and then turn it. Uh, you really want to start creating these deep, dark, rich notes. Okay, so this is the last batch of beef, and I'm just going to use a slotted spoon to take it out and put it in a bowl, set it aside. Got some good browning on the beef, and we've built up some nice fond in the bottom of the pan, and there's oil and grease from the beef in the bottom of the pan. If it's excessive, drain it off, but for the most part, you want to leave it in there to lubricate the pan for the next operation, which is to fry off this pretty much standard mirepoix. So I've got diced onion, carrot, and celery. And I wanna put that in and just fry it until everything is nice and soft. The veg is starting to soften. So the next thing I'm gonna put in are some mushrooms. So I've got um, chopped mushrooms here. You've heard me say it before, don't fear the mushrooms. Get three or four different kinds of mushrooms because they're each gonna bring a different flavor and texture uh, to the bottom end of this dish, to any dish that you put them in. So I'm gonna put these in and we're just gonna continue frying these off until the mushrooms have lost most of their moisture. We're looking good. Now in this pot, I've got some chopped up potatoes, water, and salt, bringing it up to a boil. We're gonna make mashed potatoes to put on as a topping. So that sort of happens at the same time. Next into this pan, it's going to be some tomato paste. And you just wanna stir that into the vegetables and get it cooking. It just helps to remove some of that really acidic taste that you get from uh, tomato paste. Next in, Going to put some crushed garlic. And some flour. Stir the flour into the veg, and flour is just going to help thicken up the sauce, make a really nice gravy when we get to that point. Now, once you've got that stirred in mostly and you you know spilled your vegetable all over your stove top like I have. I'm gonna pour in about a cup of wine. Uh, red wine, a good red wine. The red wine you're gonna have with supper uh, is probably a good place to start. And you just wanna use that to pull up some of the fond on the bottom if you can. There might not be enough to do that job. But what the wine does, it's going to add flavor because it's a red wine, but it, the acids and everything else in the alcohol are going to release a lot of other flavors. If you don't wanna use wine, uh, you could use beer, and if you don't want to use alcohol, don't do it at all. Just add a little bit more of the beef stock later. So that's pretty much cooked off at this point. Uh, it doesn't take long for the wine to reduce pretty much right off the pan. So next in is beef stock. I can hear the potatoes are boiling pretty nicely. Some thyme sticks or uh, two or three twigs of thyme. I've got some Marmite here that I wanna put in. The Marmite is going to bring, you know, it's not gonna bring its own flavor. And I think that's something that a lot of people worry about is that it will bring its own flavor. It's really just going to help release a lot of the other flavors. It's a background player. It really is a background player that helps with everything else, just enhance all of the other flavors. So I'm gonna put that in. We're gonna bring this back up to a boil. Um, we wanna get this bubbling and start to reduce down a little bit. Now, as this comes back up to a boil, there's two more things I wanna to add to the pan. One is the ground beef. You wanna put it back in and any juice that's in the bottom of the bowl as well. 
And the final ingredient is Worcester sauce. So, you can use store-bought Worcester sauce. Lee and Parents would probably be the, you know, the best one or the most well-known one. If you don't want to use Worcester sauce or you don't have Worcester sauce, you could put in tamari or soy sauce. Those would be great additions. I have this homemade Worcester sauce that's been brewing in my fridge. It's not quite ready yet, but it packs an incredible flavor punch. So I'm going to use that. Throw that in, and that along with the Marmite is just going to bring a real, uh, a real nice flavor to this dish. So we'll stir this in, and we just want to simmer this away until we've got a nice thick sauce. You don't want this to be too thin and watery before you put the potatoes on top. We are coming along nicely. So I gave it a taste and I adjusted the amount of salt and pepper that it needed. Didn't need too much salt because there was quite a bit of salt in both the Marmite and the beef stock. Um, so you might not need a whole lot. You might not need any. Now is the point where you take the time out. Um, for no particular reason other than no one wants to get a stock of thyme on their plate and in their mouth. So pull it out best you can. You could also put a bay leaf in here if you wanted to. I know that's something that uh, a lot of people would do and a lot of people wouldn't do. If it's something that you want to put in there, please go ahead and do. I know that it does bring a lot of flavor. Contrary to what a lot of people believe, a bay leaf does bring a lot of flavor. Next in are some peas and corn, and I just like to sprinkle those on top. Get them a little bit everywhere. I don't put them on too soon because I don't want them to overcook. Um, and these are just frozen peas and corn. Lastly, the potatoes. I've already drained the potatoes and I've left them in the pot to sort of give off as much steam as possible, to get rid of as much water as possible. And I just give them just a rough mashing. I'm not someone who likes my potatoes mashed too much. Um, for the most part, when Julie and I are just having potatoes at home, I only just sort of go through them with a fork a little bit. But for this dish, you do need mashed potatoes. And you could mash them any way you want. You could add anything into them that you want. Butter, cream, salt, pepper, cheese. I'm gonna put in a little bit of butter, a little bit of cream, and some cheese today. And as you can notice, I don't peel the potatoes either. A little bit of cheddar cheese. You could use any cheese that you like. Uh, a lot of people put Parmesan in. I think cheddar is more to my liking, but you know, it's, uh, it's your dish when you make it at home. Final assembly. So, so many ways you can put the potatoes on top. Um, you can pipe them on, you can put them on in a flat. I like to put them on in mounds so that they brown a little bit differently, um, so that you get some craggly bits on top. Really, it's up to you. Um, put them on any way that you like. Just make sure that you've got potatoes all over the top. Okay, the last little bit of potato. Now, this is fully cooked at this point. You could take it to the table and just eat it, but it's a great idea to put it in the oven for 35 to 45 minutes, just to bring all of the flavors together, get it all nice and bubbly, and to brown the potatoes on top. There you go, Jules. Thank you, Glenn. As per usual, we started with the cake. With the cake. <laughs> and we've, you know, we really should eat something other than just cake. Other than just cake. So, so conveniently, we have... This is cottage pie. That is gumdrop cake. Uh, you can find that on our Sunday morning old, old cookbook show. Okay, so I didn't leave this in the oven long enough. One of the things happens when you leave it in the oven is the... Um, it starts to solidify. It starts to well, solidify. That's not the right word, but yeah. Yeah, and, and also the potato becomes a little more solid. And I have an internal struggle with how long to leave it under the boiler, broiler, how much to brown the potato. And I often err on the side of not enough because I'm, 
notorious for burning stuff if I get distracted. So, yeah. All As the, always, fabulous. All the flavors there. Right. Um, the fun thing about cottage pie is that you can make it with the things that you like in it. Well, yeah. Uh, I mean, there is the traditional or classic cottage pie recipe, but, you know, sometimes that's a little boring to me. And it's also one that's really easy to make with lots and lots of vegetables. Yeah, you can add all kinds of different you things. You can make a veggie version. Mm -hmm. Like, there's just, I love it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's comfort food at, it, you know, at some of its best. And that homemade Worcester sauce, I'm digging that. <laughs> I'm really digging that. So, coming up, there will be another episode where I take that out of the fridge and finish it. But right now, even as mm -hmm. thick as it is, it just tastes great. It's not quite done yet, though. Uh, I think it should. I think it should go a couple more months in the fridge before it's finished. <laughs> so this is fantastic. You can sprinkle some cheese on top and put it under the broiler, and melt that cheese in. Um, there's so much to play with here, and of course, swap out the beef for lamb, and it is shepherd's pie. You could also change the flavor profile completely. You could do a curry theme, curry base. You could do a Tex-Mex Ta base. Taco, you could, yeah. Anything you like. Yeah. It's just a. It's just a model. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's a method. Take this as a method and play with the flavors and make it whatever you want. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.